I would like to present uh, my PhD thesis, which is a PhD topic, which is the use of novel MRI techniques in the diagnosis of chondrogenic bone tumors. My name is Gerd Bulacci uh, from the Medical Imaging Center of Samuel University. I'm a PhD student and a consultant radiologist. And my vision is that all patients with uh, bone and soft tissue tumors should be provided with state-of-the-art diagnostic care. And uh, in order to to, to make this vision a reality. Uh, my mission right now is to determine the optimal imaging algorithm of chondrogenic bone tumors that can eventuate higher clinical decision-making efficacy. Here you can see uh, my two projects that is right now uh, underway, and uh, I, will, I will give you uh, an insight uh, both projects in the upcoming slides. My first, uh, my first project is investigating the diagnostic accuracy of advanced MRI techniques in patients with cartilage-forming bone tumors. My co-investigator is Balash Dorony. And uh, what uh, lies behind the curtain? Uh, the majority of uh, chondroid bone tumors are actually benign enchondromas. And as you can see, its prevalence is 2 to 3% of the general population. Its malignant counterparts, chondrosarcoma, accounts for about 25% of primary malignant bone tumors, but as you can see, its incidence is very low. It's a very rare tumor. These uh, chondrosarcomas, based upon pathology, can be classified into low-grade and high-grade variants. The low-grade uh, chondrosarcomas are uh, the so-called atypical chondroid tumors for the appendicular uh, region, and the high-grade chondrosarcomas are grade two and grade three chondrosarcomas uh, according to the pathological grading, and the accurate uh, grading of these chondrogenic bone tumors uh, is important because the appropriate therapy differs greatly among different tumor grades. And this differentiation is, is not so easy. Why not, uh, why not uh, using only the pathological information, the histopathological information? In this case, the sample error from collecting the tissue sample from these uh, tumors is not so reliable, and sometimes it can, it can be misleading. It can over or under call these uh, tumors. And uh, right now, conventional MRI techniques are Another, another large pillar of the diagnosis, but they are also not that accurate. And because uh, the uh, actual uh, grading and classification of these uh, chondroid bone tumors preoperatively uh, relies on clinical, pathological, and radiological pillars, uh, lately relatively new MRI techniques emerged and were started to be used in clinical practice namely the dynamic contrast enhanced MRI, the diffusion weighted MRI, and the radiomics. So our clinical question is that, what is the diagnostic accuracy of these emerging MRI techniques for cartilage forming bone tumors compared with the conventional MRI assessment? Here you can see our PERD model here, uh, because it's a diagnostic uh, question that should be answered. And our hypothesis is that these emerging MRI techniques perform better compared to conventional MRI techniques in grading uh, of chondro uh, chondroid bone tumors. And the clinical implication is, uh, is very straightforward, to have a better preoperative clinical radiological decision making in the treatment of these tumors. So we did our systematic search in three databases uh, on 19th of November this year. And we have the, you can see our flow chart of selection. My co-investigator is right now doing his part of it, so it is only my, uh, my results. So these numbers are subject to change later. And uh, let me present you my second project which is comparing the diagnostic accuracy of conventional MRI assessment and radiomical MRI features for the distinction between enchondroma, the benign, uh, the, the benign chondroid tumor, and the low-grade chondroid tumor called atypical chondroid tumor. And why this topic? As I mentioned earlier, 
the differentiation between benign and low-grade malignant cartilage-forming tumors can be problematic. Only a few articles on MRI-based radiomical analysis of such tumors can be found in the literature. So we decided to, do, uh, to make our own research on this topic because we have the National Bone Tumor Registry at our disposal for, for decades of uh, information. And we also have uh, experts at the radiomical field in the university. And uh, our aim is to investigate the diagnostic accuracy of the radiomical analysis and to compare it with conventional MRI assessment. But what is, what is radiomics? Radiomics is also called texture analysis, which is a quantitative data extraction from medical imaging, uh, uh, with, which uh, we can combine with machine learning algorithms, and it can provide us with a very good classification of the diagnosis of the question. So it's a relatively new technique, which depends, which depends on uh, new and old images. The clinical question is, uh, is basically the same as it was before, only the, only the uh, diagnosis is a bit different because we would like to compare the benign and the low-grade malignant tumors and to have good distinction between these two entities. And our hypothesis is that radiomical analysis provides better results compared to conventional MRI assessment. The clinical implication is also the same as the first project. So before concluding my talk, uh, I, would like to, I would like to share this quote with you because uh, it is, it is almost very relate, relatable to me because uh, the more I read, the more I, I, I acquire, the more, center, the more certain I am that I know nothing. And, and that's the feeling that I have when I have this radiomical analysis and those new emerging techniques to, in my clinical field. So thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer for your questions. Thank you. Congratulations uh, for your presentation. Regarding your second project, as far as I understand, you will uh, uh, reevaluate uh, archived images, right? Yes. Will the quality of the image influence the result of the AI, or uh, do you have any information on that? Yes, it's an excellent question. It actually, the, uh, the, the radiomical analysis uh, depends on the quality of the images. So we, we uh, planned to to go back in time as far as the 2010, because uh, before that the MRI sequences and the resolution and uh, and all those uh, all those imaging parameters were not were not that good than these days. So we cannot use all the data, all the all the patients from the archive. From I think it was 1975. Uh, I think we can we can collect the data in the last 10 to 15 years at most. Congratulations for the fantastic presentation. Uh, my question would be that, uh, do you know uh, some kind of an estimation about how many uh, pictures should we show the AI for it to be uh, able to work uh, with the information? Yes, we need a, a test set and we need a, a training set. Uh, both of those sets need to be done by 40, 40, at least 40, 40 cases. So that's the absolute minimum to have a reliable, uh, reliable system. But the more uh, image we have and the best uh, we label those images, the better it will perform as a diagnostic uh, tool. So basically 40, 40, 80. Okay, I have uh, one question. So basically, you're going to compare the traditional MRI analysis to um, quantitative MRI technique. Um, the traditional one requires visual analysis, right? Yes. OK. So do you know the inter-rater re uh, differences regarding these kind of images? Like, is it known in the literature? I right guess. now. OK. Uh, we have only a, some articles, a few articles, and it was 0 0.8, 0 0.88, something like that. But uh, in those articles, it was almost equal or, or it performed a bit better 
con uh, knowing the pathology, knowing the final diagnosis, comparing the original radiological diagnosis, but the interrater agreement of was about uh, 0 0.8 or something like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. So I have a question and a suggestion. Okay. <clears throat> so the, the, my question is, uh, do you know how many different um, models are used currently in radiomics? And uh, the, the, uh, the suggestion is, if you can, I think you should use older images, even if they are not that high resolution, because they can uh, improve the model. As far as I know, uh, we, can, we can make uh, differences between the models. It can be done by using 2D or 3D models. It, it is the segmentation uh, type. If you, if you only segment in two dimension or three dimension, the, the later is a bit more difficult and a bit more complicated and it doesn't provide you better results. So basically we will use 2D. Uh, text, uh, 2D texture analysis and uh, the second part of your question, we, we have, uh, so you need to have uh, a bit homogeneous uh, images for the training. So you cannot uh, do that, uh, you, uh, you provide the texture analysis software, uh, low resolution and high resolution from different vendors for example, so for the training. You, you need to provide homogeneous data sets and after the validation, per, and in the validation period, you should provide it the, the more heterogeneous data sets to, to have a larger and a broader uh, usage of, uh, of these data. As far as I know, but uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we have a, a radiomic specialist in our clinic and that's her, uh, to her specialty. And I'm, I'm a novice in that field, and I can only tell you what I, uh, I heard from her. Mm -hmm.